Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to go through my top 10 sweaters that I've made with you all. Now, all these sweaters are really like the only 10 sweaters that I've handmade that I still wear. So I'll just go through each of them with you, let you know the name of the pattern and the um, designer in the screen so you can reference the, that there and I'll add links to each of the patterns on Ravelry below. Um, this one is probably my favorite to wear this spring. It is a really really lightweight Cormo fiber that I believe is like a woolen spun prep. Two ply yarn if I'm not mistaken although it could have been a three ply. And I bought this fiber at last year's New York State Sheep and Wool Festival. Uh, this pattern is, I, I knit it a little bit cropped, a little shorter than the pattern recommended, and I made the sleeves nice and long. So um, as long as I continue to wear this, it'll still be a full length sleeve as my elbows tend to shrink up my sleeves. But this sweater, I like to just kind of push up and wear around the house like this. I'm going to model all of my sweaters in a dress, although I don't wear all of my sweaters with dresses, but a lot of my springtime wardrobe fits best over dresses or skirts. So this is probably my favorite sweater to wear right around now, um, but I'll share a little bit of details about each of the sweaters as I try them on. They will not be shown in any particular order if that um, needs to be explained. So love this sweater, one of my most recent makes. Another cropped sweater, super cropped sweater, <laughs> um, is the Ranunculus. And I made this with Quince & Company's Piper Yarn, which is a single ply um, merino mohair blend. So it's a little fuzzy. It's fuzzier now more than ever. And it kind of has like a faux fur <laughs> look to it the more that it's worn. This yarn has completely felted in the armpits, um, which probably makes it more stable of a fabric, um, but does shrink up the length a little bit even more. So um, definitely don't wear this top without a dress beneath it, because it's pretty much all it's good for. The sleeves too, I just blocked this, and so the sleeves are kind of how they looked when I finished making the sweater. And I kind of regret not making them just a tad bit longer. But to be honest with you, once this garment has been on the body for a few hours, the sleeves shrink up to like elbow height. It is totally bizarre. Um, I do have probably 60 to 70 grams of this yarn left. And I don't know quite what I'm going to do with it. But maybe, uh, maybe I'll make Shippy a sweater. Um... I do love this garment. It's really, really soft. Um, it feels nice and kind of feminine and a little delicate, which is not something I, I have a lot of in my wardrobe. Um, and it was just a really nice, fun sweater to make. It was rather quick. Um, the sleeves felt like they were taking forever compared to the body, but I like the lace detail. Uh, I did have short rows built into the pattern, which I enjoyed a lot. And, you know, I like it when I don't have to figure out my own short rows. And, um, yeah, it's, um, it doesn't sit too much, um, higher in the front as the back. So, you know, I just, I feel like it drapes over the body well, even though it is that very wide, um, kind of, I want to say width, but lots of ease, lots of ease. So... Anyway, this is uh, another top spring sweater in my wardrobe. My next sweater is a cardigan. It is designed by Kate Davies and I love the very retro look of it. I don't normally wear this sweater with this dress. I typically pair it with a pair of jeans, um, something like that. And I typically wear this sweater in the fall or winter months because it is a little toothy in the fiber content. It's a woolen spun yarn that's not of a fine fine fiber so really like this um nice and casual now one of the five colors in the last sweater that i made was hand spun 
Um, but this sweater is 100% hand spun. Um, just half of it is mine and half of it is someone else's. Um, the top yarn here is Kashgora yarn. It is so, so, so soft. Um, definitely would make another garment with this yarn. Uh, and then the bottom is my own hand spun. And it's, um, I want to say that they're both Cormo fiber, but a nice long staple fine wool. And I really love this garment. Um, it kind of fit... It fits really wide on the shoulders. Can you see how far this goes? I think that's one reason really why I don't wear it all that often. Um, I would probably pair it with this top, with this skirt. Um, although I do wear this, I think a lot more with jeans. Um, this garment does have in the back, you might see like a very stark line where the color changes where I didn't alternate skeins um, because I just didn't think to, to be honest with you. And so I just make sure to wear that side on the back because this pattern is like absolutely the same front and back. Um, and I wish I had maybe drawn the, the neck in a little extra, but I don't know if that would have caused it to hang differently or not. Um, and I did knit this garment before the pattern update came out. So my gauge is probably a little off compared to what it should have measured up to. So I really like this. Um, I don't really wear it enough. I should probably try wearing it more. I think now is probably the perfect time of year because June, July, August, it's going to be way too hot to wear anything like wool um, over the kind of the armpit area. Otherwise, I'm just asking for it to felt. Um, I would say that this armpit has felted a little bit. It's something that tends to happen a lot in my garments. I don't know about you. Um, but I'm trying to make things a little further from the pit um, or a little bit bigger in size so that the armpit doesn't change over time in its shape and size. This is a sweater I'm super proud of, um, not just because I spun it from a fleece, uh, but also because it's the first cable sweater I've ever made and the first piece sweater that I've ever made. This is by Nora Gong. It was published in um, one of the pom-pom magazines and it has these beautiful puff sleeves. Um, my hand spun kind of came out a little thinner in the yarn that I used for the sleeves. So um, I do plan to make this garment again. I love it so much with just a different yarn, different color, something that I can wear just as much as this one. Um, and I think that the sleeves might be a little puffier if the yarn were as thick as the body. So we'll see about that. These arm sleeves are nice and long. Um, this sweater kind of, it wears sort of like iron. It is peeling a little bit, but it's very sturdy yarn, I want to say. And um, yeah, it still, it still kind of smells like a fleece. Not like sheepy smell, but just like lanolin. It smells like lanolin is what this, the sweater smells so much like lanolin, I can hardly wear it. <laughs> This sweater is the last of my hand spun um, sweaters that I've made so far. It is a Kate Davies design, really ingenious. It's made from the bottom up and I intentionally um, chose my colors in a way that it's kind of patterned and organized but also appearing random. Um, I wanted it to look kind of like a, a stone with layers of color, um, something kind of geological. But uh, I really like this sweater. It's nice and light. I think it pairs really well with dresses and skirts like this one with a more umpire waist. Um, it is a bat wing kind of dolman sleeve, which I really like. I mentioned how I want to make more sweaters that are more loose in the armpit so that they're not felting all the time, um, which mine seem to want to do because it is getting hotter and hotter every year, it seems. But um, I tend to sweat a lot because I don't wear like aluminum deodorants. Anyway, uh, so this sweater is nice and loose. I think this is not even that, I haven't really had this for that long. So it'll probably get a lot of wear in 2020. These next four sweaters are ones I more often wear in the winter and colder months. This is Jenny's Drop Shoulder and I knit this with Barrett Wool Company. Um, obviously I just pulled this out of my closet. It's a little bit wrinkled, uh, but this is a true workhorse yarn and I really like it. It's a really good quality sweater. There's some pilling, but I find that um, they can be easily removed without ruining or damaging the fabric itself. Um, 
So I will probably depill this. Uh, the armpits are a little felted, um, but it has really held up well. Um, there was one time that I tried a new deodorant and it changed the color of my armpits. I think the acidity was just off. Um, and it changed the color of the armpits like they were bleached. I freaked out because I just finished. This is the first fingering weight sweater I've ever made. And it's like full on broken moss stitch. So I was like, uh-uh. And as soon as I washed it, it went back to normal color. So um, definitely not, I think, an issue with a yarn, but more of an issue with that deodorant. And like I said, my elbows kind of blow out the sleeves. So it, it probably went all the way to my cuff when I finished and it's kind of shrunk in a little bit. So I always make my sleeves a little extra long these days, but I do like the length of the this sleeve on this garment. And this is one of my favorite cozy, comfy, but confident kind of garments that I still wear out of the house. Uh, this uh, is the third to last sweater and I do love it. It's um, one of the first luxury yarn sweaters I've ever made. It, like a, the others, like really just pulled it out of my drawer so it could use like a nice steam blocking. Um, it does tend to pucker right here. It's one of those yoke designs where you do a bunch of increases and then you knit in a straight pattern and then you add more increases and I've never been able to do a design like this without some kind of puckering and I think that's why a lot of designers are adding a little bit of a lace element to yokes to kind of better hide that type of increasing style of all at once and then again but uh, it's 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 one of those yokes that kind of hugs my shoulders and I do feel like kind of restricts movement a little bit like if I bring my arms up and I bring them back down I'm always gonna have to adjust the sweater um, this is one that I typically wear with like a high waist skirt and it's tucked in. Um, if I, it's one of the few kind of fitted ish sweaters that I wear, um, that would look good with something like a wool skirt maybe, but I do really love the design. I love the colors. This yarn is Joseph and Ani from, uh, Abundant Earth Fiber and the contrast is Quince and Company in that, um, kind of ochre mustard color. I forget what they call it, but I really do like this garment. It's really thick and warm and comfortable. This is one of the most better fitting sweaters I've ever made. Uh, it is designed by Ella Gordon and I knit this with Shetland, uh, Jameson and Smith Shetland two ply jumper weight yarn. I chose my own colors for the yoke and I think I've updated my Ravelry project page with those. Uh, and I really, really like this. It's very long. If you, I can't even stand up tall enough for you to see how long the sweater is, but that makes it really nice to wear when I ride my bike because it'll never kind of lift high enough that I get that wind chill factor. Um, I feel like the yoke depth is not so much that it gives that same constricted feeling of the shoulders like the previous sweater I just showed you. Um, and the sleeves I made nice and long. So as I continue to wear it throughout the day, it doesn't shrink too short. I did do a twisted rib on this sweater and I do, um, I don't think I did anything special with the bind off. Oh, you know what it is? I, um, these sweaters are, these sweaters, these sleeves are knit from the bottom up. So my cast on is um, nice and easy and it feels good. Sometimes I choose the wrong cast off for cuffs and I've learned my lessons. But this is one of my favorite garments. I do wear it with jeans. I wear it with skirts tucked in. A lot of my skirts are too big because I found them at the thrift store in whatever size, whatever size they were made. And I just kind of stuff my <laughs> skirts with sweaters to fit me. Um, but I really love this sweater. It's really, really beautiful. Okay, I lied. I have one more sweater after this one. I forgot it was hanging on a hook somewhere. <laughs> uh, but this is a Lopi sweater uh, by Jennifer Steingess. I absolutely love this pattern. Um, it's one of the first kind of yoke designs I've ever knit. And then I went on to make a couple more for family. Um, it's just a really, really 
interesting design. It is nice and long too. So um, like when I wear it with jeans, it never lifts up high enough that I get that draft on the backside uh, when riding or what have you. Uh, it's very thick, it's very warm, and I can definitely feel it um, without, you know, I'm not wearing a t-shirt or a tank top beneath it. So, um, it is a little itchy, but I think that if it were cold, I wouldn't be so itchy personally. I've often worn my low B sweaters without lining garments and I'm fine with it as long as it's not too warm. So I'm going to take this off and show you the one last bonus sweater of this video that is another favorite of mine. This last sweater is another Lopi, um, and it's a cardigan with pockets. So, uh, yeah, absolutely perfect. Um, I can wear buttoned up or not buttoned. It's easier to just throw on when it's not left buttoned. So I tend to wear it that way most often. Um, but I really do love this pattern. And I think that this is going to get more wear even into the spring and summer because there's just some times where you need to throw something on, even if it's loopy. <laughs> I don't have a lot of cardigans these days. I think I have two that I've shown you. So none of them are quite really spring, summer appropriate fibers. So I'll have to work on that. But uh, I want to thank you so much for joining me with my top 10 or 11 sweaters. Um, I have a few things on my needles that will add to the pile, but You'll see those as they're finished. I just want to thank you so much for spending a little time with me here, and I hope that you're well. Take care. Bye-bye.